math to say that as more people are accessing these programs and it's growing, if we are not continuing throughout the pandemic, as you mentioned earlier, some of the there was lots of Clone haze for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Got it nice and chilly in here for you, Secretary Vilsack. So <laughs> you guys had to heat it up. Uh, thanks for being here again to talk to us. It's no surprise you already know what I'm going to ask about. But before I begin my questions, I just want to um, make note of the fact that we saw a chart earlier from the Republicans that showed that cost neutrality, their cost neutrality plan would not cut SNAP benefits. I think it is pretty basic math to say that as more people are accessing these programs and it's growing, if we are not continuing to invest in them, that is in essence cutting uh, SNAP benefits. You can call it whatever you want. But we pulled uh, data from the CBO's May baseline that refutes that account. So I have another chart that I would like to introduce into the record to show that if we keep the thrifty food plan cost neutral, this is the Republicans' plan, this is the Democrats' plan. Benefits will be decreased. I'd like to enter that into the record, Mr. Chair. Without objection. Thank you. Secretary Vilsack, as you know, SNAP is the leading anti-hunger program in the nation. And according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, the program reduces food insecurity by 30%. I've heard several times in this hearing that food is national security. So I would hope that we would be trying to feed more people, not less, here in America. Uh, and to do that, we've heard a lot about the data and how it's collected. SNAP administrators provide application assistance, answer client questions, and offer verification guidance for SNAP applicants. Throughout the pandemic, as you mentioned earlier, some of the, there was lots of flexibility and SNAP administrators were stretched beyond capacity as they worked to ensure families were fed. Now, as we're looking at how do we improve these programs, as of April 2023, states and towns struggled to fill over 833,000 open positions for the employees who actually do this work. I have concerns about that because I don't want us to look at the program as ineffective or inefficient because of staffing or administrative concerns. So, Secretary Vilsack, what have you heard from state agencies about obstacles to recruiting and retaining SNAP administrators? I think most of the agencies have asked for some kind of relaxation. And the concern is we're providing $5.7 billion to states across the country to administer these programs. Uh, and I think it's uh, I important and necessary for them to do what they need to do to be able to, to recruit the, the staff necessary to administer these programs properly without necessarily cutting corners. Because when you cut corners, it risks the integrity of the program. So we're encouraging folks uh, to get back to uh, normal business. Mm -hmm. um, and we appreciate the importance of flexibility, but there is a, a, I think there's a balance between flexibility and making sure that the resources we're providing them are being used adequately and appropriately to staff these programs. Uh, I couldn't agree more. Last week I introduced the SNAP Administrators Retention Act, which would allow states to receive 100% of the costs associated with hiring and retaining staffs staff to run these programs. Additionally, it aligns the wages of the, of the state SNAP administrators with federal wages. These are common sense solutions to improve access to SNAP, prevent backlogs, and feed real people. Secretary Vilsack, on February 8th, the USDA sent letters to states, including my state of Connecticut, expressing concern about the decline in several key benchmarks of state administration of SNAP. I heard you say earlier, people don't know about the benefits, they don't have access to them, they're not really sure um, how to go about getting them. Can you please elaborate on how the Food and Nutrition Service plans to collaborate with states to improve program efficiency? We continue to provide technical assistance uh, to states as they uh, grapple with particular issues. We also have the Employment and Training Program, the SNAP Education Program. There's a variety of ways in which we are providing assistance to states uh, in the administration of this program. Uh, the, the challenge, I think, is that some states basically don't, they, they're not as aggressive as they need to be mm -hmm. to make sure that people who qualify for the program actually sign up for the program. So we, we basically keep track, and if we see somebody that's below uh, par, uh, we basically encourage them to, to step up their, act, uh, their activities. Sometimes it's with seniors, sometimes it's with language issues, uh, sometimes it's just making sure that uh, the word gets out and you don't create too many barriers uh, to participation. 
Well, um, thank you for that. And like you, I agree that the government does work. We can make it work. Uh, I can tell you when a storm hits and FEMA comes, people are happy to see the government. I have a piece of legislation closing the college hunger gap, which does exactly that. When students apply for a FAFSA, they would know if they were eligible for a program like SNAP. And we're all, it's one government. We have the ability to communicate across agencies, and I think we could do a better job of doing that. Thank you so much for your time today. Uh, Ms. Chair, yield back. As of April 2023, states and towns struggled to fill over 800 in the math to say that as more people are accessing these programs and it's growing, if we are not continuing. I have concerns about that because I don't want us to look at the program as ineffective or inefficient because of staffing or administrative concerns. So Secretary Vilsack, Secretary Vilsack so <laughs> you guys had to heat it up. Uh, thanks for being here. We need more people, not less, here in America. Uh, and to do that, we've heard of 33,000 open positions for the employees who actually do this work. Sure, families were f fed. Now, as we're looking at how do we improve these programs, what have you heard from state agencies about obstacles to recruiting and retaining SNAP? To the record, Mr. Chair. Without objection. Thank you. And according to the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, the program reduces, and this is the Democrats' plan, benefits will be decreased. I'd like to enter that into flexibility and SNAP administrators were stretched beyond capacity as they work to 